Oh, there we go. What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Cameron here. I've been seeing a lot of videos on, on my feed recently about people making pond hopping boxes uh, and kind of putting together a uh, do-it-all box that kind of covers all techniques. So I figured it'd be kind of fun to do that today. So we're gonna look at the tackle that I have and then we're gonna go into what I think needs to be in this box and kind of what it's gonna include and then we'll get right into it. So let's do it. So real quickly, here is my makeshift tackle it, it used to be an entertainment center where the TV goes, but this is what we're working with. Let me zoom out a little bit. So here's what we got. All of these mystery tackle boxes have soft plastics in them too. So like this one's uh, swim baits, or this is actually big swim baits, uh, soft plastic swim baits. This one's big worms. This one's trailers and like creature baits, beaver baits, stuff like that. And then I have the rest of my creature baits right there. The rest of my soft swim baits here. These are all my Z-Man Elastec stuff, and then my worms in the back. And then I got my drop shot and soft plastic jerk baits and flukes right here. So let's get right into it, guys. So real quickly, we'll go over kind of how my tackle's organized right now, because I think it's gonna make it a little bit easier. This is all my BFS and Crofty stuff. So I don't really think I'm gonna be putting any of this in the bag, just because I don't use it enough to warrant using space for it. This is my top water stack right here. So these are all whopper ploppers. And underneath that, I've got all of my frogs. And then underneath that is like spooks, poppers, walking baits, stuff like that. These are all my crankbaits. So I've got deep diving Rapalas and a couple mega bass crankbaits in there. A bunch of square bills in here. And then some more just various crankbaits. And then this one below it is all my rattle traps. Here is all my terminal tackle. So I'm not gonna be putting any terminal tackle in the box. This is only gonna be for hard baits, um, soft plastics and stuff. I've already got some set out over here. So this is gonna end up being the, the pond hopping box. So we'll set that aside. But there's my terminal tackle. Here's my chatterbait box. These are basically all jackhammers. Got dark colored here, light colored here, and then various colors on this side. Bl bluegill, reds, green pumpkins, stuff like that. And underneath that is all my spinner baits. Over here is my jerk baits. This one in particular right here, this mega bass one, is definitely going in the box. That is a very, very good one. This is, I don't really know what this stack is. Those are little tiny jigs. And then underneath that I got octopus hooks. So that really is part of my terminal tackle. This is my jig row or stack. So in here is all my sleeper craws all different colors and underneath that is my jig box so same thing I got up uh, my green pumpkin blues black and blues swim jigs at the bottom and then various other colors flipping jigs up front and these are my swim baits so I got all my Demiki underspins all of my glide baits and big swim baits in here then this is all of like my soft body dark sleepers uh, head hunters stuff like that so let's get started. Basically, I want to put probably just stuff that's gonna be good for summer and early fall in this box, just because the box is so small. If I wanted to put one of all of these in there, there wouldn't be enough. So I think we're just going to go for what I think will work in the ponds around me here in Texas in this time of year. So let's get started. So right away, I've got three that I know are going to be useful. So I've got a black and blue jackhammer with a little Zacco electric shad, I think is the color on the back. I'm going for jackhammers instead of spinner baits, not only because they'll fit better in here, but because a lot of the ponds that I fish have a lot of grass and not a lot of wood and structure. So these work a lot better. This black and red, this is an original chatterbait. I have this in there. You can see it's been used pretty heavily. Um, my buddy caught a eight pounder out of a pond around me on this last year. So that exact color with that exact trailer. So I always have that just in case I wanna try to bust that out and do the same thing. So next, a little bit different. This is a swim jig. So a lot of the ponds around me have bluegill and not shad, which is why I've gone with this darker color and they're darker waters. 
So this is kind of like a green pumpkin blue with a uh, Kitek on the back of it. Definitely want to use a, a paddle tail or some kind of swim bait instead of a creature bait on these swim jigs. So great for covering water if you have a pond that is just kind of like a wide open circle that you want to cover a lot of area. That's a good place to start. So next up is top water. So I've got this little bone colored uh, Whopper Plopper 90 or Chopo 90 from Berkeley. So this thing will basically catch fish any time of the year, <laughs> early morning or late evening. So we're gonna stick that in there. And we are also going to put this little filthy frog in there. This is the, not the poppin' frog, this is like the pad crasher from, from Guggen, real sharp hooks. You can see I've trimmed the skirt down where one leg is longer than the other slightly, make it walk a little bit easier. This is definitely the smaller size, so I think this will be perfect for, for the pond bass. And uh, on to the second row. So I'm not putting any square bills or deep divers in here just because for pond hopping, I don't really necessarily see myself using them that much. But there are a couple ponds around me that do have shad. And I think this is this is the way to go. This is a rattle trap. It's got a pretty, pretty good rattle, very sharp hooks. I do not know what brand it is, but a Z63, this is a mystery tackle box rattle trap that I got. So in the ponds that don't have bluegill, they have a little bit more open water where I don't need to be using a swim jig or a chatterbait. I think this could be a good way to go. A lot of the ponds have a ton of snot grass and vegetation right now. Snot grass is not really ideal for something like that, but hydrilla, regular, regular grass, stuff like that, ripping it through could, could get you a reaction bite. So I think that's always good to have on hand, something like that. Actually, we're gonna put this in that one right there to create a little bit more room. So now for my secret weapons, my sleeper crawls. So these are three of my favorite colors by far. So this one's the natural pro blue. So you can see that color just looks really, really, really good. Put that in there. This one is like green pumpkin red flakes. This looks very natural. Looks like most crawfish you'd see. So that's also very good. The hook looks like it's been out a little bit, maybe not. And then by far my favorite color, muddy copper. This is what I've caught the most fish on by far. I don't know what it is about this color, but they absolutely destroy it. So we're gonna put that in there for sure. Wouldn't be a summertime box without some flipping jigs. So these are both from Battle Baits. These are brush bombs. I don't remember the name of this color. I think it's Missouri Craw, but I've got a X-Zone Adrenaline Craw but it, it looks really good together. So we'll use that. And then my favorite color, this is Potomac Craw. So this is that green pumpkin blue I was talking about. I caught a ton of fish on this earlier in the spring. And it's got an adrenaline craw on it as well and the green pumpkin blue flake. So this is an absolutely killer, killer jig as well. And I would have a black and blue in here, but I've already got a black and blue chatterbait that I can kind of fish like a jig, just lifting it up and letting it fall. And same with the swim jig. So I think I'm, I'm covered right there. Add another top water in here. I'm gonna add this Rebel Popper just because it'll give me a little bit different action from a frog and a walk plopper. I'm gonna put that right there. And then I don't know if this is gonna fit, so I might have to move this down here. So we're gonna take this out and then I'll put my jerk bait in here next. Here's the, the jerk bait I was talking about. This is a Mega Bass Ito Vision 110. Half ounce, strong craw or strong uh, rattles, just absolutely amazing looking jerk bait. Great finish, hooks super sharp, definitely worth the money. So I'm gonna put this Demiki underspin in there with the Kitek Easy Shiner on the back of it. That is a great looking setup right there. Catches a lot of fish any time of the year, so also great to have on hand. This one, this one might actually fit in the uh, the other box right there. The other. We're also gonna put in this little five inch swim bait from Six Sense. this is a trace. Uh, this is a, I'm not sure if this is a fast sink or a slow sink. I think this is a fast sink, to be honest. So, going in the, the long tray right there. So, here's what we got so far. We'll kind of recap. Chatterbaits, jackhammers, swim jig, rattle trap, frog and popper, underspin, two flipping jigs, Sleeper Craws, Jerkbait, Whopper Popper, and Swimbait. 
So I think we've really only got one other box to tackle, which is this one right here. So we're going to grab a classic sleeper, classic dark sleeper. That's the big size. I don't remember, I think half ounce or one ounce. So that one for sure. As well as we'll do two different sleeper gills. So we'll do a darker one. And we'll also do a natural pumpkin seed. So I think that about covers the, the hard baits, guys. So let's kind of let's kind of talk about the soft plastics and what I would have on hand at all times just to make sure that you can cover just about any type of technique. Scattered about right here is is kind of all of my on hands that I would need. So a lot of the uh, or big technique you guys saw me try to fish last time was a drop shot. These right here are killer for this time of year. These chartreuse tips right here mimic those uh, little juvenile bait fish that are spawning in our own beds right now. And a lot of the times you'll see the bass come up and chase and eat them. So just like in my last video, this is a great imitation of that. This is the uh, super salt finesse worm from Zoom. Great drop shot bait. This is another good drop shot bait right here. If you got shad, this is just a little fluke. This isn't uh, one that's big enough to put on like a twist lock head or anything. You can see the head of it's a little different compared to like say the flush where it kind of comes to a bigger point. This one just kind of cuts off right here. So this is a, a good drop shot bait. This is something new that I like to have on hand right now when I'm fishing weightless. This is a Yamatanuki. So these are super heavy. They're like 5 16 ounce. This one's just a green pumpkin, regular or baby bass, but also great to have if you're fishing like a weightless Texas rig to have Cinco's on hand and something like this to kind of change it up a little bit. You always want to have swim baits. So I'm a huge fan of Sixth Sense. These divine swim baits are great paddle tails. So I've got like this natural shad color as well as a black and blue. This one's a little bit bigger. More drop shot baits, a little bit smaller. If I'm fishing somewhere deep and clear, this is the color in the, the bait that I'm going with. This is the Glitch Minnow in Morning Dawn. Great, great bait. I've got a lot of the Glitch Minnows. I've got this one called Record Breaker, which is great for, I use this for crappie a lot of the times because it imitates a minnow really well. And then finally, another color I've got right here, Watermelon Shad. Mimics the bluegill and sunfish really well. These are great too, if you're on a budget, you can find these at Walmart. These are just like pre-packaged Ned rigs from Strike King, so they've got the bait and the Ned heads in there. I actually just caught a couple fish on this today, this exact color and everything. So these are great to always have on hand too when the bite gets really tough, bust out a Ned rig. Of course, like we've talked about before, flukes, you can see the head, the difference in the shape right here is to the other ones. These are the ones that you wanna be throwing on like a jerk, oh, soft plastic jerk bait rod, something like that. Arkansas Shiner, absolute favorite flute color right here. And then last but not least, Senkos. Uh, this is a wacky rig, or a wacky style Senko that I found at Walmart that actually is pretty good. So it's got really, really big ends on it that give it a good action if you hook it right here in the middle, but just regular Senkos will work just fine. Um, you can Texas rig them, weightless, and you can fish them wacky, do really whatever you want. And I think these are, yeah, these are great for drop shots as well. So I think that just about covers it. Thank you guys for tuning in and checking out the whole video. Let me know what you think of the box, if you would rock this, uh, this tackle box, or if you think there's any kind of other baits I need or any improvements, colors, any kind of changes you'd make. Like I said, this is focused on Texas right now in the summer and then into the early fall in the next coming weeks. So that's why I've gone with what I've done, the colors, techniques, all that stuff. Don't really have anything that can get hung up in a lot of snot grass because a lot of these ponds have muck and that nasty, just snotty grass in there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.